Hey guys, Poison Gift here. I'm doing a quick uh, integration tutorial for Survivor Vision. Now this will be using the updated version of Survivor Vision that has been submitted to Epic today. So this will not work on the current available version, but within a couple of days will be where it's at. And the reason for this is I've changed the integration process to make it a lot easier for you guys. Um, so I'm using 4.11 for this. Uh, it will work on all the versions. 4.11 is just the base version I use for Survivor Vision, so Survivor Vision works for 4.11 onwards. Um, so we're just going to give this a name of integration tutorial. Now I'm using the top-down project just so it's something a bit different so you can see it works in a different controller setup. Um, and we will just wait for that to go. We also need to open up our source project obviously, so you would go down to here and find Survivor Vision, which is there, create, pro create project and make the version for your version of Unreal you're working in. Um, once that's done, easiest way to find the project is right click, go show in folder, and you want to go into the content folder and copy and paste Survivor Vision. Now you want to do it in this new project, or your project as it is, so you navigate to that projects content folder and paste that into there. So once we've done that we can close both those windows. Now we've got the survival vision content in here. Now first things first we want to set up our project correctly. So the very first thing you need to do when using multiple stencils for custom render depth which is what we're doing with survival vision is open up your project settings go down to engine rendering which is that one there and then scroll down until you find this section here, post processing. And there's a setting called custom depth stencil pass. Sorry, custom depth stencil pass. You want to set that to enabled with stencil. So do that and then just save your project. And then you want to navigate, uh, open up your character. So in this case, that's a survival, uh, the top down character, which opened on another window. Um, but this could be any character you have. So click on class settings uh, under interfaces here, click add, and you want to add this one here, BP int survivor vision character. Now what that will do, just compile and save, is give you a couple of interfaces here as well as a couple of events. So let's start with the interfaces. One is called get character mesh, that is just the mesh for your character. So drop that onto there. That's all you need to do for that one. Next one is get SV components. Now for this we need a post processing, a distortion sphere, and a detection sphere. So let's add those to our setup. Let's start with a post process component. And we'll set these up as we go. So we'll call this SVPP for survival vision post processing. We want to give it a priority of one. Ensure that it is enabled and unbound. Drop this down go to blendables and we want to add a blendable use an asset reference and then we want to select our material now I'm going to use the demo material from survivor vision just because that's set up with a number of channels already but you would probably want to use survivor vision default or your own version of the material we're just going to use survivor, uh, MI survivor vision demo 1 just compile and save that as we go next one we need is a distortion sphere which is actually just a sphere, so a sphere static mesh. So we call that SV underscore distortion. Now for this one we want to give it a material of uh, MI initial pulse, there that one, the initial pulse default. And we also want to make sure that it is set to not visible to begin with. We save that one and then finally we need to add a sphere <coughs> Sphere collision, excuse me. I call this SV underscore detect or detection. And for this one, we need to, we don't need to, but we're going to ensure for testing that it's not hidden in game so we can see it. And I believe that is it for this one. Yep. So I compile and save all of that just in case, and then drop these guys onto here. So obviously the post-processing goes on post-process, distortion on distortion, detection on detection. You won't be able to drop the wrong things on. If I try and drop distortion onto this one, it won't let me connect them up. 
Okay, so we can close both those interface functions, and then next step in here we need to go um, event set control. Yep, that one there. And just all we want to do with this one is go promote variable and call this player controller. You can call that whatever you want though, you just need to use it in other uh, functions. So then what we want to do is click on the detection sphere, get a begin overlap and also an end overlap. Now using the player controller, we want to do a simple is valid check. And all that does is ensure that when the game starts up it doesn't give us an error just because it hasn't initialized everything. And as long as that is valid, then we want to use this one again and do overlap. Now that's not going to show up yet because we haven't actually added the controller interface. So just open up your controller, click on class settings, under interfaces click add and go controller. Then compile and save, then go back into here and we should be able to see that event. Yep, there we go. So under BP in Survivor Vision Controller, overlap. Connect that one up to that. Connect other actor to this one. And that's it for there. We copy and paste this down here. Connect that up. Connect the other actor to that again and then set that off. And that is it for your, con your character. So you can compile, save and close that guy, I think. Yeah, I reckon that's it. So then, in our controller, on the event graph, we want to start with event begin play. Event begin play. So once you've got your event begin play, you just right click, get controlled pawn, and from that we want to go set controller. I mean, drag that over to here. And then just off of here, we can drag and go reference to self. Then what we want to do is add in the Survivor Vision Manager. So just type in Survivor, add that to this, bring this guy over here and type drag off, initialize. And connect that up. Oops. And then again, we want to use self as the player controller reference. Now, other than that, there's only a couple of other things we need. First one is event overlap, which is, I'll do that again, event overlap. This comes from the controller interface we added. And with this one, we want to take this guy, go manage highlight. and then connect the inputs up to that there. And then finally, we just need to control the actual key pressing. So you would usually use a input mapping for this. I'm just gonna use left shift, just cause it's a little bit quicker for the purpose of demonstration. So, uh, what we wanna do is grab this one again. I wanna go manage fade. Want two of those both connected to that, top one off, uh, on and the bottom one off and we connect them up to that there. Now I believe that is it, so let's just compile and save. Um, now just for the purpose of demonstration I'll show you by default this is where our character is and this is the default range of survivor vision. So we're going to do two things here, we're going to jump back into the controller going to drop the range down to about 750 as well as the vision range. Uh, we're going to leave all the other settings at default for this purpose and we're going to drop into character and we're just going to extend the vision we have. So, oops, 200. And that should be 2000. So, when we fire that up you can see we can see a lot more. Now we just need to set up our actors that we want to highlight. So I'm just going to highlight these three here. So we need to generate overlap events. Anything that needs to be highlighted needs to have an overlap event. Under rendering, we go down here, enable custom render depth, and just set a value. 
turn it back off and then finally under actor we add the highlight tag so highlight so can copy that for future this one here same deal we add the highlight tag give it a channel that we want to use so we're using two and enable generate overlaps this one here same deal enable generate overlaps uh, give it a custom depth for three and then finally give it the tag but then this one we're also going to give it the second tag for item indicator just so we can see that they actually work as well and now I believe that should be everything so I'm just going to save and then we're going to fire it up and there we go so you can see these two are in range and they're working now I can't move this character while shift is held down if I move this one here you can see it does work and if I click over here as they get out of range they turn off so that's, all, that's the process um, like I said you will need to wait a couple of days until Epic have updated the files but this turns the process from a half an hour or so annoying process to that simple few step process if you have any questions or issues please let me know otherwise I'll catch you next time guys Sorry guys, I just realised when I was watching back the tutorial that the indicator didn't work. That's actually because I've used the wrong tag. So I put in a tag of item indicator, it should have been show indicator. And if we fire that up, you'll see, there we go, the indicator's there. So you can use them however you like. Okay, cheers.